more forward. Notice she started swishing her tail when I started asking for more forward. That does not mean that she's in any pain, it does not mean that there's anything wrong. It just means that she really don't want to walk that fast and she's trying to tell me that she don't want to go that fast. It's not a huge deal. I get a lot of comments about tail swishing and the overall perception of tail switching, swishing in the show world has changed quite a bit in the last couple of years and the general public has not caught up with what that is. This would be a good time to kind of, I'll tell you about that while I'm working this bend, counter bend, shoulders move. So a while back, and by a while back, I mean maybe 10 years, tail swishing kind of became the focus in the show world. Judges did not want to see a tail swish at all, and any tail swishing, you were docked, and that was the direction the industry was going and that's kind of where most of the public is right now they think that all tail swishing is negative and in reality tail swishing isn't necessarily negative it's it is a means of communication and sometimes it can mean something negative sometimes it doesn't sometimes it's just a horse swishing flies off of it sometimes it's a horse telling another horse to to move away sometimes it's a horse balancing himself as I ask for movements. Now, I'm sure you've seen in some of the videos that I've done, most of the time when you do flying lead changes, that horse's tail comes up and then comes back down when you come back in that new lead. Pretty common. Doesn't really mean anything. That's the horse balancing himself to do the maneuver that you're asking to do. So back to what's going on in the show world. When at shows, they started docking you pretty hard for tail swishing. What a lot of trainers was doing was deadening tails. And that wasn't good for the horse, wasn't good for anybody. It was not, it was not good for the industry. And the horse industry realized that that wasn't good for the industry, but they also realized that they were had, kind of had a part in encouraging people to do that. There are a lot of people out there that will do what it takes to win, even though if what that takes is shady and questionable. So what most horse organizations have done is they've gone back and taken a different stance on tail movement. And kind of the general thing now about tail movement, if you go to a judge's school, is they're only gonna dock you for tail movement that takes away from the overall picture of what you're doing with the horse, the maneuver you're doing, that kind of thing. And that incidental tail movement for the maneuver that you're doing is okay and is not to be docked. And that was much better for the horse industry. It was much better for the horses because sometimes the horses just move the tail when they're, you're riding or doing maneuvers and they should not be uh, discounted for it should not be penalized for it so the new perception on tail movement is that tail movement is not to be taken away from so that tail movement is not to be docked as long as it does not take away from the maneuver that's being done so when you see tail movement just because the horse moves its tail does not mean that's a bad thing. When the horse industry thought that tail movement, when the horse industry thought that all tail movement was bad, that push for that perception is what led to uh, deadened tails. If you have any questions about that, or if you've seen any horses that have had their tails deadened and the issues that that causes, put a comment below. I have had a couple of horses come in here that have had their tails deadened before they came here. Most of them were a little bit older horses. 
that came from the time and she's pushing on my face or she's pushing on my hands with her face most of the time that was older horses that came from the time when tails were deadened on a normal basis it still happens nowadays but not on a regular basis like it used to